Wait for it. Okay, live. Yay! Howdy, people. Let me bring this down just a little bit. And sorry that this is going near, 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 but that's a way that you guys can see what's going on on the flame with this national torch. I've got a little precarious at best, precarious at best, but it'll do the job so that you can see what's going on in the flame. Right? Right. One person watching. Thank you. Let's see. Let's make a... Uh, Oh no, what's a good thing to make? Icicles this time of year? Let's do an icicle with with this type of this type of torch. It's a single flame and it will do the job for you. Uh, the National is a unique little torch. One of my one of my first uh, glass blowing glass blowing torches was a National. And the thing that I like about it is that you can go from a little single flame like this all you got to do is change it out and put on a different torch tip like this and you've got a multi-flame torch instead of just a single flame but it's just a matter of playing with it and working within its parameters I guess you could say the lesson that I gave today with uh, uh, Justin hello Diane Nice to see you out there, Justin, and I will put that video up. I, I did a sort of a short little video with him and him at the torch using the National um, so that you could see it, and he kind of liked it. Hello, Beth Fisher. Nice to see that you're out there watching as well. I'm doing a quick icicle, and uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put like a dolphin on the top of this icicle and anything that I do today is if anybody is interested in it just uh, give me a holler and we'll see about uh, we'll see what we can do about uh, getting it to you I am I am PayPal ready okay there's the icicle part of this thing let's do the dolphin part now let's see let's see let's see we're going to do a blue dolphin, and the blue dolphin is going to have white trim. Because I just happen to have some blue right here and some white right here. So, it's not going to be a very big dolphin on the top of this icicle. But it'll be a unique little critter, I guess you could say, to say the least. Where am I located? I'm in North Carolina, on the on the coast, near Moorhead City, North Carolina is is the uh, name of the town. Most of my life, I've lived in this direction. And when I wasn't living here, I had dreams of living here. In other words, in my dreams, it was the, this is the place where my dreams would go to. Um, like walking on the beach or. Seeing a tidal wave happen, it would be the dreams would be of this area. You say, oh yeah, he's having a dreams of tidal wave and still living on the coast. He's, he's in good shape, right? <laughs> That's the, uh, the fin to this dolphin. That's nice, Diane. PA, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Somebody's got to live there. I like it here because it gets a little cold and a little hot, but not sweltering hot and not sweltering cold. I guess in the winter, I guess I wouldn't mind it not as sweltering cold either. I mean, even a little cold, but that's okay. There's the uh, front fence to this dolphin. 19 people watching, that's a cool thing. And again, I've mentioned that if you are interested in any of the figurines that I do, uh, give me a shout out and we'll see about getting them to you. Is that Keen? 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 I don't know. I'm sorry. Hey, Larry. Nice to know you're from Minnesota, I guess. 
Somebody's got to be from there, too. It's a little colder there than I, I want to say. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to bend this thing just a little bit. For those that are just tuning in, this one is going to be turned into a a uh, why is it not a focus? Well, I guess it's focusing back here, but it's not focusing up here. Who knows? It's doing the job. New Mexico. Wow. We got them from all over. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add just a little, well, no, I'll, I'll do it just from here. I'll uh, add it right here. And now I'm going to add some eyes and a nose to this end and a loop. Here's the nose. And the eyes. There we go. And now a loop or a bail or whatever you want to call it. What kind of glass are you using? I am using, of all things, da 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 da, -da borosilicate. Yay! CO33. Most of what I do, though, in the size range that I do it, you could probably get away with doing it with um, with soft glass, uh, CoE 90 to 104. You just got to play with it a little differently. That's all. Melt it a little faster, a little slower. But it, the size that I'm doing, it works. And we got one... Icicle, let me pull it off right about there. Ta da! And I could do a half a dozen of those in no time. Hey, Jessica! That one turned out, a, that, that icicle was a little short, but it'll do the job. Um, let's do a mermaid one, huh? Sound good? And if you have a request, I'll do the request as well. Make a frog or a turtle or octopus. That might be a nice one too, an octopus icicle. We'll see. But you make the request and I'll see what it is. Did you say you were using uh, a, a 3A torch? Yes, I am using a 3A torch. Actually, it's even before it was a 3A torch. Um, I got these torches from a guy named Ralph who lived in Tallahassee, Florida area that was getting out of the glass blowing business. And I bought uh, what he had, uh, which was a, a, a couple of Nationals torches and um, a couple of welding torches. And uh, let's see, what else did he have? He had a few things uh, and some glass rods, uh, mostly clear. I did a uh, YouTube video on unboxing of just some of the stuff and one of my favorite new tools that I got from him was a pair of uh, I guess you could say it, it's sort of like a scallop press that actually makes uh, shell shapes like this look at there you press it and you get that type of deal My teacher was Homer Hoyt. Uh, wow, that is. <laughs> I heard of him. Homer, Homer, yeah, I heard of him. <laughs> Some people haven't. I'll do a gecko. But first, I was going to do a, a mermaid. Well, since I haven't really started, I can do a gecko first and then a mermaid. How's that sound? We'll get there. Uh, we'll use this green here for the gecko. And we'll make it spotted with white spots as well. Hey, Jason and Cheryl Amy, I see that that press is always way, yeah, it's also way cool. Yes, that press is a really neat one, and I even learned how to use it to make dragonflies with. Let me see if I can grab one of those real quick. And, of course, 
when I'm looking for something. It's never around or available at the moment that you want to look and find it. But um, uh, here they are. Here's one of them. Uh, I think. Nope, that's not it. Darn. Nope, not around. It's a square somewhere. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and do this guy uh, gecko, but and then we'll we'll get into doing showing off some glass stuff. Okay. Any. Haha, ha, anything you can't do? Yeah, I, I can't do uh, dog. Uh, I can do dogs, but I can't do like wolves or or wool, uh, furry woolly, woolly creatures like sheep or stuff like that. Uh, what type of glass are you using? Again, it's borosilicate or borode or ty uh, type glass. COE 33. Flatten this out. And that's going to be my gecko. And I'll make this into an icicle as well. Why? Because it's Christmas. Now hush. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, we'll do that. Pinch. There's the head to the gecko. I'm going to hold on to his nose here for a little while and bring out the rest of him. And I'll give him some spots here in a minute, too. <laughs> hey, Steve. Hey, Doc. Nice to see you're out there and doing things as well. Taking time out of your life and seeing what I'm up to. But as always, I'm up to about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, you know me. Not very tall. But I get into a lot of stuff. <laughs> Blame me. Okay, now the legs. Oh, a lot of people. Eric Smith. Hi, Eric. And Bobby R Romano. Sorry. Dyslexia. I'm, if I'm screwing up your name, can't sue me. I'm, I'm dyslexic. Yeah, I can talk like this. I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> you got to love it, don't you? And again, if there is anything that you see that you even see on my table in the mess that you would like to consider buying, I am PayPal ready and I can have it shipped to you within a couple of days. And that's just the way I, I, I ride around here. Here's the legs to this guy. And then we're going to give him some white spots. Like I said, now this is a nice national torch and it does do justice to uh, just about everything. I think I've got a number two torch tip on here. Maybe a number, no, I think it's a number two. Maybe a number one, but I doubt it. But I can actually, I've got a, a zero watt tip for this thing and I've got, uh, here's the spots. Smooth in a little. Have you ever made any dragons? Um, let me answer that with just saying, oh no, not me. I wouldn't do a dragon. And that one in particular is made out of quartz rock. I actually melted, and if you don't think it, uh, uh, I'm serious enough, quartz gets really, really bright. See there? even brighter than it does with Pyrex. So, yeah, I, I, I have a number five welding shade plus that I put on my, uh, the same lens that you're watching with. I, I, I just switch it out for a number five shade and uh, do some glass blowing that way, or, or actually quartz blowing then. Uh, this one didn't, now we gotta put on some, put on some, uh, some toes. Let's give him blue eyes and blue toes. And what's the next question? 
I'm so gonna get a number three A. I have some tips to it. Enjoyed this. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. It is a it is a very versatile torch, and you just gotta. Some people like to uh, use bigger torches, and I do myself. My favorite is uh, my Carlisle CC. It it is uh, a torch to beat all torches. But the one thing that the Carl that the National has that the Carlisle can't even come close to touching is its versatility for one. No, it, it, no the Carlisle does have versatility. Don't get me wrong there. But it, the uh, with the Carlisle, the Canon is about almost, well, it's about a little bit smaller than the actual disc here that the lens is in front of here. Um, and it uh, to get a good angle to get at the glass, you have to work at it. I'm sorry that my glass lens is bobbling a little bit because I knock it from time to time. It's basically precariously perched so that you guys can see what goes on inside the flame. And I gotta keep up with all these. I'm sorry. I've been using Linux from GTT, but I missed the 3A and glad I tuned in. Thanks a bunch. No problem, Cheryl. Tony, that dragon is cute. Yes. Dragons are my favorite. Out of all that I do, dragons have always been my favorite, and I've come a long way with those babies. Okay, we're going to turn his head just a little bit this way. And you know what? I'm not going to put him in an icicle. I'm just going to leave him the way he is. I'll do the next one into an icicle, the mermaid. You can't really see the bumps on it like I thought it would come out, but that's that's life sometimes and experimentation. Um, but yeah, that uh, that dragon again is made out of quartz. I uh, actually take quartz beach pebbles, like the smooth flat skimming stones you find at the beach, melt them down, and I made that dragon. And it takes about twice the amount of heat and twice the amount of effort to melt the quartz as it does to melt the glass because and plus it's a lot brighter who knew speaking of which I'm gonna do this real quick I noticed that there's a lot of fingerprints on this thing lots of fingerprints <laughs> now I'll put it back on there and it'll fall over everywhere there we go a little less fingerprints That'll do a job. Now, this time I am going to do a mermaid. Here's the tail to the mermaid, a nice bluish periwinkle blue. Oops, pinch that off a little bit. There we go. We're going to kick it down a notch as well. Okay, there's the That's part of the fin. Let's go with um, um, num, 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 num. Oh yeah, that'll do it. That'll do really nicely. We're going to go with this for the body. I mean for the fin or the bottom part of the of the fish or or the or the mermaid. And that's for the upper part. Nice clear, but I'm going to fume it with silver and then fume it with gold and it's going to come out with a pink and gold luster. Okay? And if anybody has a request that they'd like to see me do, I'm dyslexic, who is very artistic and is watching too, and he thinks your work is very cool. Thank you. Uh, I hope it's Michelle McCloyd. Yeah. And Tony Tuttle, wow, that's amazing. I've never even thought about being able to do that with quartz. Yeah, again, you really, it's, it's, it's bright. It takes a little bit more time to melt. You got to get a little bit of patience going on, but you can, and it does melt. I even make uh, marbles out of it. Here's one. Speaking of what, yeah, quartz like stones. I don't know if you can see this or not. Of course it's not gonna 
pop out at you. Dang it, let me try to do this again. But inside that marble, oh, you still can't see it. Dang it, what's going on? Maybe I have to clean the lens of the... Oh, there you go. I guess you can see it there. There's a man inside there swimming with a dolphin. That's I can do better pictures of that, but the other stuff is Boro. Yes, the other stuff that I'm using is Boro. Okay, back to the lady at hand here. This shouldn't take me more than a couple of minutes, and it's hard to read, explain, <laughs> and show off at the same time. I guess you got to learn to pat your head, uh, rub your tummy, and sing Dixie at the same time. <laughs> but it works. I also have a YouTube channel for those that uh, didn't know of me before. Um, under the name Lou, L-U, Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. And I have uh, over 400 videos of demoing uh, a budget torch, this national torch, the, um, the, uh, the Carlisle. I also have a Bethlehem torch that I've demoed a couple of times. Um, I have uh, a little bit of everything. And, and uh, I just try to, if somebody asks me a question about something, I usually try to get to it and explain it. And matter of fact, with this little bit here, there's the hair to the to the little lady. I should have done it up in a blonde or whatever, but this will do. This will do quite nicely. I'm going to put a little bail or loop on the top of her head. And I usually, my bails, I do a question mark. Pull it out. Curve it over. Make the question mark and then heat it up about one third in and let it slump over and meet itself. Oops, sorry about the bounce. I hit my... Uh -huh. Come on, up of there. Up, 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 up. Come. It's not going to work. There it is. And now I, have, now I have to reseal it again as well. Sometimes. <laughs> No matter what you do, you're going to screw it. Screw the pooch. But it's big enough that I can still flare it out and do the job. Now, I also said that this was going to be... Let me finish up the, 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 the bottom part of the mermaid. And then I'm going to fume it with a little bit of silver and then a little bit of gold. And you'll see a really cool deal happen here. Um... Uh, Makes me miss glasswork so bad. I really crappy shop. Uh, make uh, my stuff also. Jack Ryan, I haven't been able to recover from that married now and different life priorities, I guess. Well, if you have a little bit of time to yourself... Uh, it never hurts to have a good outlet to create with, whether it be glass blowing, whether it be something else. Never hurts to have a, a, a an outlet. It helps you to take down your stress levels. It helps you to be creative. It helps your mind to go in directions that you couldn't have think, even have thought of about five minutes ago, which is like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Now there's the tail to this mermaid. And now we're going to get into what I said, fuming. This won't take but a second if I do this right. I'm not sure if that's got a little bit of silver on the top. Or, oh, there it was. Is it still there? Well, there might be enough silver to do the job. There's silver on this piece right here that's in my right hand. And what's in my left hand, I sort of bathe... Uh, it's not quite there yet. Oh, there it is. Let's see if that'll work. Just a little bit of tint is what I'm looking for. I know you can't see it, and I can't see it either, so it's not really coming out yet. So maybe I... Let me see. Any silver. Ah. 
this one got silver on it. Man, it's hard to find. I put silver on a piece of glass earlier. Oh yeah, there we go. That got some silver on it. You can see it went from the clear to now a nice yellowish gold color. I don't know why that the thing is not adjusting at all. I haven't figured that out at all. I'm going to have to hurt this or something. Anyway, now we're going to add a little bit of gold. Just so happens. There it is. On this one, you can't really see it, but right about where I'm pointing, there's a little speck of gold on this one. And you got it when you got it, when you're fuming with gold and it's stuck to a piece of boro, you got to ease it in, otherwise, that little piece of gold will go off on its own. Have you ever placed done a figurine inside a blown ornament video? Uh, might have. Um, I've done uh, a Jonah inside the whale, I believe. I also do like a bear bearing bear. Here we go. Here goes the gold. And you saw it was a yellow. And now it's a nice, almost pink and gold luster. Once that cools down. And now we're going to add the icicle part to this, which isn't much. We're just going to kick it up a notch. I've done, uh, I also do, I don't know if I've done it into a video, but I have done uh, like, uh, I do an angel inside a Christmas ornament. But the coolest thing about the angel inside the Christmas ornament is that the outside or the inside of the angel is the outside of the ball. It's sort of sort of like the the uh, the navel in an orange is the it, the how it dimples in is how it dimples in on the um, becomes the inside of the angel. But the it's hard to explain. Easy to do. It's kind of kind of crazy that way. Not filming from a piece of quartz. No, I'm not. I did it with Boro. Always have seemed better having higher melt point. Yes, uh, the quartz does have a, a better melt point, but sometimes, and I do have quartz available, don't get me wrong there, but sometimes it's just easier to um, grab what's available to put the um, the gold to. And the silver is a little bit more, it likes to, once you start melting the glass, with the silver, it sort of the silver sort of takes likes to recede into the um, into the rod, and you have to pinch it every once in a while to bring it up to the surface. But it does a job. Hope I'm answering the questions, and if you have others, uh, you can DM me or leave a message here after the video or during the video or after you've seen the video. And I'll try to get back to you. And again, if you have a request of something you would like made, I can do it. I uh, am PayPal ready and I could have it. I will make it, let you see it. And then if you like it, buy it. And if you don't like it, don't buy it. That's the way I look at things. Okay, here we go. Now, I put four corners on this icicle, making it more of a square block instead of a, a, round, a flat block. Reason being is that as you twist, each one of those edges now becomes more of the corkscrew so that it looks tighter in the, in the corkscrew than it would if, if it was just two edges. So it looks like you're doing twice the job in half the time. There you go. So far I've done a dolphin and a mermaid ornament. Any requests? I, I, I know that somebody said something about a dragon, or if you have something else that you'd like to see done, just name it out and I will do it. And we'll get there from here.
right? Right. Hold on to it. Oops, tap it, pull it off. Come on, there we go. Mm -hmm. Fire polish. And now we have that as well. I'm sorry that it can't, you gotta get it further away from to get the image to show up. That's kind of weird. But there's the mermaid icicle. Um, any requests? Hi, John. Nice to see you out there. Ooh, I could do an octopus or a dragon. Any requests? Or, and or a request. If somebody has something else they'd like to see done, like an angel or, a, or whatever, I'll see what I can do about doing it. Would love to see an angel ornament you spoke of, something of some time. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll see about doing that for you, Stephanie. Uh, thanks for answering the question, and I will rewatch. I'm sorry, rewatch the video, loop, stitch, and talk that, that we talked about. Thanks for sharing your art and, th uh, and skills with us. See more. Okay, I can't see more at the moment. If I do, I'll probably screw it up. Because <laughs> I did that. I tried to see something once before, and it, it screwed it up. I'm sorry. But yeah, um, the lace is learning to flow the glass. And even with this single flame like this, you can do major lace. Um, matter of fact, my first. And the lace that I have come up with, it's not your basic loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loop-de-loop. Um, but uh, fold to fold to fold is the way I uh, explain it. We'll pull that off right there. That's what I'll do. I will do a conch shell real quick using the lace, me lace method. You're flowing the glass and you're heating up about where the, cone, the top of the cone is and you're going back and forth and you're sort of feeding it to where it's already melted, which is down below the cone. And I am turning this rod from time to time. It's not staying in one spot. Yes, I'm gonna make this look easy. Why? Because I've been doing this since 1982, okay? But it's nothing that somebody else can't learn how to do either. That's one of the things I try to tell people is the only thing that stops you from doing anything is in your mind somewhere you've already said to yourself, I cannot do that. And if you've already told yourself you cannot do that, you will not be able to. So always look at something and say, I can't do it right now maybe, but I would love to try to learn. Right, right. Mm. Pulling out the uh, the bottom of the conch shell right now. And I'm going to fume this with silver as well. My mother loves these little conch shells. She, uh, she keeps giving them away faster than I can give them to her. <laughs> and this type of lace is just pulling... Pull, pull, pull and fold away, pull and fold away. I call it the fold and pull method, but it's the same idea. Fold and pull. Fold over, pull out, fold over, pull out. Same idea. There we go. And I think that'll be enough for this conch shell. Nice little bottom of the conch shell anyway. And I'll flare out the uh, the opening a little bit. Never hurts to have some graphite. Hi, Ethan Cox. Glad to see people watching. And I'm doing this on uh, on of all places marbles and things because they tend to. There a lot of people tend to watch this site, and when they see a live person watching. Seashell. That's what I'm doing right now. But I'll also do another one with a with a neat little tool that I just got recently. Which is next after this. 
Okay, this is a conch shell. And now I'm going to do sort of like the little bumpy ridges that go along the edge of the conch shell. I just sort of roll it along. And just keep spiraling upwards as I do that. And now the bumps. Hey Liz. Yeah, this is a conch shell that I'm doing, by the way. I where the spot oh there it is. Hey Libby. We having a good day today? Or partially good day, or almost a good day that's almost there that you think it's worth being happy about for something even if it was just that chocolate chip cookie <laughs> there we go nice loop on here and now I'm going to uh, the tweezers make sure the openings in about the right spot that I want it And now I'm going to fume this with silver because I can. If I have to start out with a new piece of silver, so be it, but I'll do that. I keep transferring it from one punte to the other while I work it, but it does a job. And I just do that with a nice little, what I call a cold weld. Now, where is that silver that I just had that I made it silver with a, la a little bit ago here? Of course it's never around when you want it. Right? Right. Now, there's the gold. Where'd I do it that silver? There's some of it. I think that'll do it. That'll do it, probably. Let's try it. See? I had to get off. I see a gecko. and Can I see it again when you're done? Yes. I will show you the gecko that I did. And I do other geckos. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of fuming going on. Oh, that just, that just blew the, the, the silver over there. You saw it a minute ago. It was nice and clear. And now it's nice and silvery. Silvery gold. Can't complain one bit right there at all. Matter of fact, I think I will add the gold to this one as well. Oh, did the gold pop off of there? Well, that one's not it. Where is it? Uh, whistle. Here you go. Too many pieces of glass on my table. You think I could keep track of things, right? Right, right, wrong. Oh well, we'll leave it as is. It'll be nice. It'll be nice. And here's the gecko. Right here. Oops. Again, for some reason, the camera is not focusing well. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, there we can zoom in a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Nope, that's not going to help. That's not going to help one bit. But there's the gecko. I didn't put him on an icicle. I just did him, uh, and he looks like he's got warts because he's got the. I tried to put some spots on him, and they didn't blend as well as they could have. Um, let's go ahead and take this guy off. And one last request, and then I'm going to call this episode quits. If anybody has any ideas or questions. It's cute. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate that. Uh, now, a dragon. I guess I can do a dragon. Since everybody has said something. Somebody said something about it earlier. Got 18 people. Dragons, like I said, have always been my favorite. I have dealt with them and done... I've loved to do my dragons. Let's just put it that way. Let's make him blue. 
blue dragon and we'll give him white trim which will look really cool butterfly my daughter says okay I'll do the blue dragon then a quick butterfly what can I say <laughs> and again as if there is anything that you would like to order or buy from me somewhere down the line I am PayPal ready you can message me through messenger and or here say hey I'm interested and we'll do something with you how much for these well on average uh, they're in the eight to ten dollar range um, actually that lizard is more in the tw ten to twelve dollar range um, but the icicles um, also in the twelve dollar range a piece and if you have uh, I could probably do a set of three for twenty dollars just to be nice plus four dollars for postage so that's twenty four altogether if you had three different animals that you wanted to or they really do make neat little dillies for the tree special ones because it'll be like no others she said a doggy yeah it looks like a rottweiler our dog uh, and that's the one thing about dogs I can do like a puppy type dog and uh, a Doberman because we used to own a Doberman and I used I can do a Dachshund type deal because my father used to own Dachshunds and there's a few other dogs that I can probably get away with doing but nine times out of ten um, I can do more of a puppy type dog where you can tell me to do long ears short ears short nose flat no uh, long nose um, but to make it look more like a Rottweiler or make it look more like a, you know, a, a, a St. Bernard. <laughs> I'm not good at that for some reason. We all have our, uh, and I guess because I was either scared by a dog when I was a kid or whatever, who knows. Um, I'm just not as good at doing dogs as other ones. Do you do... Something pigs, because of the, where the, the, the anyway, we'll get there. But yeah, I could do a butterfly after this one. Let me get there. So many questions, so little time. I plan on making this one a little bit short, and I will come back probably about another hour and do another little bit one. And I'll end up putting these on YouTube as well just because I can and the ones on YouTube turn out really nice is let's get this guy wings one wing uh, hey Michelle Kaiser yeah let's do the other wing and I got to do the front legs and the tail. Yeah, dragons are my favorite. Why? I don't know. I just like dragons. And I'd like to think that if my dragons were real, they'd come up to you and, you know, excuse me, you just dropped your wallet. Would you, would you like me to help you pick it up or something? In other words, they come to your, your rescue fast and they'd want to say, I run through eat you. <laughs> I say that in one of my dragons. It's a hollow ornament t style deal, but uh, it's a dragon with a man inside that I call Night's Hard Day. <laughs> yes, I have a sense of humor. I do a pig with a baby pig that I call Pig in a Poke. I do a bear with a baby bear I call Bear Bearing Bear. Oops, 
I almost lost this and it dropped. My cold weld over here didn't didn't survive as well as it could have. I do uh, a cat with a little mouse inside that I call mouse in a catatonic state. I also do uh, a uh, unicorn with a baby unicorn that they call unicorn that's been horsing around. I do an elephant with a spare trunk. And then I do Jonah inside the whale. But there are four answers to who's inside the whale. You go, huh? What do you mean four answers? Well, think about it. Jonah, if you're biblical. Geppetto, if you're literal. Surfer and the whale dude, if you're from California. And last but not least, if you're a redneck, it's Noah. <laughs> and you go, what? You don't know how many times I'd have that on the table. And people would come up and say, oh, look, honey, it's Noah. And I say, you buy it, it's Noah. And those same set of people, when I have a platypus on the table, will come up to the table and say, oh, look, that's a two-legged beaver. That's the best two-legged beaver I ever saw in my life. No, no, I take that back. Not a platypus, but the uh, manatee. Excuse me. They'll look at the manatee and they'll say, oh, that's the best two-legged beaver I ever saw in my life. And, and it's like, uh, you buy it, it's a two-legged beaver. But if anybody else buys it and they know it's a manatee, then it's a manatee, right? <laughs> oh, the manatee of it all. <laughs> okay. Butterfly. Simple little thing. Uh, excuse me. We'll give it white wings and a couple of blue spots on it. And then I'm going to call this quits. Like I said before. We will, uh, it's not going to be very big. It's just going to be like a little pendant style size. Pull this up and out into the body of the butterfly. Now, it's cool the fire on your clear glass sticks shield all the way through to your hand. Yes, the light shows, but it's not hot. Um, it's the, the good good uh, point to bring up. It is not a good conductor of heat, but a great conductor of light. It's kind of hard to explain. That's why fiber optics work so well, because it travels down the, the tube. But it doesn't travel, the heat doesn't travel up the tube. It just, the uh, the light does. So, good point. I, I'm glad you mentioned it, and I'm, I am always happy to explain that to people who don't understand it. Now, looking like a butterfly, doesn't it? You're going, yeah, right. We'll see. Press one wing out. Press the other wing out. Now we're going to give it some dots. Dot, da, 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 dot. Probably should have done them in a better location, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm on uh, YouTube at the moment. Oh, hey! <laughs> My brother Alan just coming in to say hi. Thought I'd warn you. Oh, good. Yeah, you know me, Tourette syndrome. <laughs> that very well. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm a, you just needed the lighter anyway, right? Yeah, I want to do something up to light a candle. Got it. Okay. Now, here is another little, little neat trick. You ready for this? 
Uh, let's press it in a little bit first. Where? What am I looking for? This will do it. Indent. But I'm not done yet. Where is what I'm looking for? Oh, here they are. That, these will work out really well as well. Okay. Now. Wire cutters. Gentle press and crease. Break it in two. Do that again on this side. Butterfly is not turning out as great as it is it should, but it'll do the job. Oop. Step back to itself. Break it apart again. There we go. You can do that with a pair of scissors as well. Works out. Pinch and press, pinch and press, now the other one, pinch and press a little bit in another direction. Uh, and last but not least, the one down here, pinch and press. Yeah, it's done better by a long shot. Guess I should have quit before I got the, to the butterfly, right? But I have not finished yet. I will continue to play doctor until I like it a little better. more like a flower than a butterfly. <laughs> I've done better. Let's play with it just a little bit more, maybe with the tweezers. Okay. So yes, I've been doing it for a long while, and yes, I still screw up. We all have our days. the best part about life. Still learning. Okay. Now we're going to... Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, here we go. I will show you a butterfly later. I will do one off, uh, off camera and get back to you with Dicro in it. I'll make it and show it off. Same idea that I did here, but a little bit different. Dicro gives it nice sparkly glittery wings. There's the loop. And pull it off the tail. Yep, that didn't go quite as well as I'd liked, but it does the deal. Part of learning. Yes, Lauren, you're right. It is part of learning. And sometimes you can sit there and do a perfect piece, and then the next day you try to do that same perfect piece and couldn't do it to save your life. It's all in the uh, timing, practice, and the flow of the creativity, creative, creative, uh, creative energy that is around us. There we go. One simple, oops, butterfly. And with that, I am going to quit for the while. 
and I will um, put a picture, a group picture of all the things that I have just done. There it goes. Now it's adjusting. That's the butterfly. Here's the dragon. Yes, I am bench cooling them at the moment, but I will put them through the oven. And uh, here is the dolphin. The dolphin icicle. And here is the mermaid icicle. Once it gets going, it adjusts, I guess. And I also did the conch shell, which is pretty cool. And these things are up for sale. Um, just give me a holler and we'll talk about it. As always, carpe vitro, which means seize the glass, just like carpe diem means seize the day. And, uh, oh, I want to show you this part of my new little torch setup. I have a uh, mounted, <laughs> next time you're at a, a uh, grocery store and you see the, uh, the credit card machine that they have there, I, my local Walmart here was throwing out some of those credit card mounted uh, things and this is a two-part system where this square thing fits in this round peg here and I got a couple of them and that's the national torch that I have on this one and all I have to do is just switch out one little quick piece and there's my Carlisle just as and it's got a nice Elmar, Elmarver on top which is pretty cool there you go you see that pretty cool deal huh yeah that way I can switch from one torch to another without having to do too much uh, rearranging on the actual torch table itself which is pretty cool I like that idea and plus then if I wanted to I could use this as a hand torch as well so it has its advantages. So as always, Carpe Vitro, and enjoy your day. Bye for now.